Hey there, Chad Boninger here for High University Libraries. Today I had the opportunity to present to over a dozen classes uh, of business students who are doing a project to basically uh, do a business concept somewhere in the realm of the ice cream industry. Uh, what follows is the best of those three recordings of the different sessions. Uh, you'll see the whole session here where I talk about Simmons, uh, talk about uh, BizMiner, and talk about Simply Analytics. So hopefully this video gives you a rundown of the kinds of things you can do when looking at your local market and trying to understand how the industry is doing in the local market, as well as understanding uh, consumer demand and things like that in your local geographic area. My apologies for some of the bad recording uh, quality that you'll see. Uh, it just seems that Microsoft Teams didn't really record uh, my camera in a good resolution. But once you get past that, the overall screen recordings are of pretty good quality. So it's a long video. You can skip ahead. I'll have timestamps uh, for the various sections of the video uh, below. Take care and best of luck with your research. Uh, once again, I'm Chad Boninger. I am the head of user services and the business librarian for Ohio University Libraries. And y'all are doing um, uh, segue into project two. Uh, project two is actually one of my favorite parts of the cluster experience uh, because um, this is where y'all get to be a little bit more creative, you know, in your in your um, in your ideas, in your research, uh, that sort of thing. OK, so. Um, with that creativity comes some challenges. And what I mean by that is um, you're going to be past the point now where you can just go in and type in ice cream industry in IBIS World or Mintel or Statista or whatever and get some stuff. OK, so you've already done that, right? So uh, you're going to use that information that you found to kind of build upon that as you head into project two, as you create your kind of your own business concept, OK? Now, what we're going to do today is actually do a deeper dive into some data. So uh, both consumer level data and industry level data, uh, especially on the uh, local level. OK, so to give you a, a snapshot of what we're going to be doing today, let me share my screen with you here. And um, so one, one thing we're going to be doing, we're going to be looking at a database called Simmons and uh, we're going to be looking uh, at some granular level information to better understand uh, particular consumers of, of ice cream and how they might overlay with other other interests. OK, so I'll get to this uh, in just a second uh, when we when we talk about Simmons. OK, we're also going to be looking at a database called BizMiner, and uh, this report here that I've generated is basically uh, industry sales averages for ice cream parlors in the Franklin County, Ohio area. OK, so if you're going to build an ice cream shop or, or do any sort of ice cream related stuff, uh, BizMiner can kind of help you uh, better understand how the industry is performing uh, at a local level. Previously, you've been looking at national level trends with IBIS World and Statista and things like that, but BizMiner allows you to get into a, a more uh, granular uh, local level. OK, uh, finally, we'll be looking today at Simply Analytics. Uh, so we're looking right now at a map in Simply Analytics uh, that shows the percentage of people uh, around Nashville, Tennessee by zip code uh, who uh, eat Ben and Jerry's ice cream the most. OK, so uh, so we can look at this kind of data to kind of understand uh, information about our, our geographic area and our consumer and potential consumer demand of a of a particular product or a similar product to the type of product that we're going to be making or or selling or the service we're going to be offering for project two. OK, so let me get started here. I'm going to go uh, back to my uh, ice cream industry guide. OK, so uh, this is the guide here and we're going to go start first uh in the uh companies and competitor um, excuse me the uh, consumers and customers section and here's where we can find uh simmons insights okay so i'm going to open simmons here let me close my previous rendition of simmons okay and let me close my previous rendition of simply analytics so i don't confuse myself there all right so Previously, uh, in project one, we went to essentials and quick reports and generated a demographic profile that gives you the kind of just the the quick kind of charts kind of stuff. So to remind you of that again, we can go to quick reports here and we've got a demographic profile here, for example, and we can go in under our our dictionary, right? 
and we can scroll down to our our um, food snack dessert uh, example for for example here and then here we find ice cream and here we find uh, brands people eat the most for example and we can find ben and jerry's here right and then we can add that to our target and i'm flying through this because this is kind of review we're going to get to some more specific stuff here in just a second and then we run our analysis here okay okay so this gives us our demographic profile of our Ben and Jerry's consumer, all right? Now, if that wasn't a review for you, if that was way too fast, what I just did is actually in this video right here, okay? So that's a good way to kind of, if you're trying to better understand, if you're gonna be offering kind of a, a uh, more expensive type ice cream with, with boutique flavors and that kind of stuff, you, you could use Ben and Jerry's, for example, as a proxy for your uh, for your potential uh, product. OK, but everything I did there is in this video here, OK, as well as in these directions here. OK. All right, so that's that's a review of how to find these kind of demographic profiles. Now, these are great, but they're kind of limited. All right, so I'm going to go back to uh, back to the home page here and the, the home page lands on this on this cross tab. I don't know what cross tab 2.0 is. I haven't used that, so I'm just using cross tab here. OK, now. <clears throat> give me a second, let me bring my notes up here. All right, so let's say you're you've got this ice cream product store idea. OK, and you have uh, you've you've gone out and I'm just I'm just kind of you know, making this up as I go here. OK, so you you've gone out and you've got two potential store locations. OK. So one is next to a yoga studio, okay? And one is next to a NFL fan shop that sells jerseys and sports memorabilia and that kind of stuff. And you're trying to figure out like, which location might potentially bring me in as a boutique, you know, Ben and Jerry's kind of like uh, ice cream shop. So you're like, well, so I got this, you know, NFL shop that looks pretty cool here. And I've got this yoga studio. Let me try to figure out with data, which might be the best location for me to choose for my potential location for my shop. Okay. So what I'm going to do here, uh, we're going to use Simmons over here to create a cross tabulation report using the Simmons data to use data to determine which is better, which location might be better. Okay. So, um, and this is this is kind of that creative kind of thought process that you can use with data sets like this as you as you move into project two. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to ignore the search box here. I'm going to click on this dictionary here thing. OK, so what this is going to do, uh, it's going to uh, give me this option to create columns and rows over here on the right hand side. All right. So the first thing I want to do is put in my columns. I want to put in my my ice cream brand. OK, so I want to I'm going to go down and find my ice cream brand here. All right, so we can go under. Our um, food snack dessert again, and here's our ice cream and ice cream sherbet types people or excuse me brands people eat the most. And once again, my my product is going to be similar to Ben and Jerry's. It's, go, it's going to have a it's going to be a little bit more expensive. It's going to be. Um, um, you know, uh, different kind of, you know, funky flavors and that kind of stuff. So I'm going to I'm going to drag Ben and Jerry's over here to my columns. OK, so uh, so what this says is of the whole sample size of the survey, which is about twenty five thousand people, twenty one hundred and ten people said that they uh, enjoy eating Ben and Jerry's the most. That's what the MO is right here. OK, now uh, I'm going to show you how this search thing works up here rather than browse. We're going to use this search, but you can do both. OK. So I want to find information about people who, who do yoga. So I'm going to search for yoga. And one thing I want to do is right now it's it's kind of hard to tell, but it's selected on answers only. I'm going to go over here and choose the all option. All right. And then hit the hour or hit the, uh, the, the little uh, magnifying glass thing. OK, so here we see yoga. Here we see there's an entertainment leisure category. There is a sports and fitness area. OK, now we have information for people who just did yoga in the past year. OK, so people who might have tried it and did it once or did it once or twice or whatever. Uh, here we have people who are the, the hardcore yoga people. They they do yoga every chance they get. They've got their mat in the back of their car. They're ready to go at a moment's notice, that kind of stuff. So let's let's start with dragging the every chance I get people over here in my rows. All right. 
whoops, excuse me. Oh, sorry about that. Let me clear that. That didn't work out well. Let me go. I, I dragged too many things. I meant to drag just the yoga right here. There we go. Got ahead of myself. All right, you'll see that the sample size here is 867. So we might want to drag the occasionally over as well. Okay. Now the occasionally we'll see um, it, we get a few more people who have done yoga. So we're, you know, the more the more kind of you know niche something is, uh, your sample size may be smaller. Okay. Um, all right. So now, so we've got our yoga folks in here. Now let's go up here and search for. I'm just going to search for NFL. All right. But once again, clicking all. All right, and we will we will search for that. OK, now NFL is going to bring up a bunch of stuff. Um, you can kind of see by category where things are at. If we look under uh, entertainment, leisure, sports interest here, sports interest last 12 months. Here's the National Football League. And here we have people who are very interested, somewhat interested or a little bit interested. OK, so I'm, I'm looking for that kind of um, let's look at the, the very interested folks, right? And then uh, let's look at the the somewhat interested folks. OK, so these are these are the type of people who are probably more inclined to visit the NFL shop to go buy a jersey or buy, you know, uh, an autograph poster or whatever. OK, so once I'm satisfied with that, I've got some I've got you know, my my main kind of thing I'm up got up here and the things I want to compare down here in my rows. I can go up here to the to the right and click on my um, my arrow here, which is going to run the cross tab for me. OK. Now, what I'm going to hope is I get some data that that is somewhat meaningful. Um, yeah, so if we look at this, let me kind of try to blow this up a little bit for you. Um, and the first column over here is the total population. OK, so this basically says, um, you know, the, the total of the total population, you know, if we we're looking at the top here of the total population going down the vertical, 23.9% uh, of, of the total population is very interested in NFL football versus 14% of the total population is somewhat interested in NFL football. OK, so um, if we scroll over, here's where we have our, our ice cream. So we have our, our Ben and Jerry's. OK, and. One thing I want to notice right away is I see over here in the index, we've got an index of 173. So when you're looking at indices, all right, an index, the average of the total survey is usually 100. That's the everybody who took the survey, the index will be 100. So here we could see this line here. We've got these people are like 73% more likely to like a particular product. OK, so if we look over here on the left hand side, we're going to follow this left to right. OK. We can see of those people who play who do yoga every chance I get and we're going to use this horizontal one because we're going left to right of the people who said I like to do yoga every chance I get 17% of them. Like Ben and Jerry's ice cream the most. OK, now if we look at that comparatively speaking to NFL football fans of those people who are very interested in NFL football. 9.4% of them like Ben and Jerry's ice cream the most. OK, and that's why the index here is actually below 100. OK, so this is not the target consumer we're after with our ice cream shop, right? Um, however, we can see both people who do yoga occasionally and people who do yoga every chance they get. These folks are going to be probably more inclined to potentially visit our our um, our upscale, more expensive kind of uh, boutique ice cream store uh, than the NFL shop. All right now it's TBD whether they're actually going to do yoga, then go do ice cream or do ice cream, then do, then do yoga. But anyway, you can see how the data points align to show that that's probably a more uh, uh, prominent indicator of, of of my success near the yoga store as opposed to my success near the NFL shop. OK. Now I'm going to go back to the dictionary here and show you another way that you can look at this. And let's just say, for example, um, you're you also want to look at um, you, you want to target something like um, uh, college educated um, uh, females who are NFL fans. OK, it's a silly example, but this is this is I'm just going to show you how you can build a custom variable. OK. So what we can do here is we can start off um, up here and I'm going to scroll down and look at our lifestyle demographics. And we can see here is demographics here and we have gender. 
and we have female. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a custom variable down here at the very bottom. So I'm going to drag female down here. All right, you'll notice everything's down here green. Everything is good to go. I'm going to do age now. Actually, let me do um, education highest level completed. All right, rather than age and. Let's do. Um, let's do bachelor's degree or, or higher. This is this will be college educated or higher females. OK, so I'm going to drag. That down here. OK, now you can see it turn red on us. I want to fix that here in a second. OK, and then we can go up and say, let's look at our uh, entertainment leisure and let's do our um, our sports interests and sports interests last 12 months and you can see there's all these kind of things we can look at here's our nfl fans and i'm just going to do um i'm just going to do a little bit interested okay so let's let's do a little bit interested and we'll do that okay now you see it's we're, we're kind of it's not happy with us okay so it's red down here now what we want to do is we we need to put in a qualifier to combine these three variables. OK, so all we're going to do is click in here and we can click on and you can see it's red again and we can click on and here and now everything is green. It's happy. OK, now what we can do up here now is we can call this um, um, college. Uh, ed. Uh, female. NFL fans. Now this is not all, all going to make it on the on the little line there, but we can see that to, to what we're what we're looking at. All right. So now we're going to actually put this on our rows here and we're going to move this to our rows. All right, so here we have our, our list down here. Now you notice my sample size went way down because I did all those com combination of variables. So we'll see if I actually get a good data data pool here, but I uh, just kind of give you an idea as far as what we're looking at here. All right, so here we see if we scroll over. Ah, this is interesting. Look at here. That's pretty cool. I that I didn't intend that for that to happen. But look, our our college educated female NFL fans are almost equivalent to our our yoga folks in their in their likelihood of liking Ben and Jerry's ice cream the most. Okay, so potentially I've dug a little bit deeper here. You know, um, maybe maybe my initial. Um, um, uh, understanding of the data because it did not dig deep enough uh, would mean that maybe my NFL shop might be OK, you know, uh, depending on what kind of clientele go into my my NFL shop that potentially might be next to my yogurt shop. OK, so anyway, you can use this kind of data to kind of really kind of tell your story uh, on on, you know, where you're what kind of product you're doing, what kind of location you're doing, uh, that kind of stuff. So the sky's the limit with with Simmons. Uh, when you're when you're doing that kind of data for for this purpose, you just have to be a little bit creative with it um, in in trying to figure out what kind of data uh, might be useful to you. OK. All right, so uh, I'm going to go and look uh, next at. Uh, we're going to go under uh, local market info. OK, so we didn't actually explore this area much uh, for project one. Uh, the first resource we'll look at here is is BizMiner. And I have a video down here that kind of shows you uh, one aspect of BizMiner, um, and I'll I'll show you both different ways that you can use BizMiner for um, uh, uh, for this particular project. And uh, BizMiner can be um, occasionally sluggish to load, so uh, so we'll uh, we'll hope it actually. Hold on, I've got two instances open. That's probably why it's doing that. Let me close that out. Try again here. OK, so um, so there's three sections in here in BizMiner. I tend to use these two the most, the industry financial profile section uh, and the industry market profile. OK, so the industry financial profile tends to be um, more financial oriented. So if you want to know like what, you know, how much do ice cream shops in Columbus, Ohio usually spend on wages or rent or uh, what's their um, you know what's their overall value of their inventories or that kind of stuff so we can we can use this section here for that uh the industry market profile will give you actual more more or less uh kind of sales averages and that kind of stuff across the industry how many average employees uh, uh, the you know the industry employees uh that sort of thing okay so we'll look look at both here for our purposes 
So the industry financial profile here, the first thing you have to do is select an industry. And the way this works, um, you can either click and 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 deep dive or you can do a search. Uh, so I'll just do a search for ice cream and click the hourglass here. And for my example, I'm just going to use uh, ice cream parlors. Um, and once we do that, it adds the ice cream industry there. Uh, we're not ready to go yet. Like we can't click access now over here yet because we have to select a market area. Uh, so let's select a market area here and let's look at um, uh, let's look at Ohio. And you can see once we select Ohio, it will actually scroll down and give us uh, other other options to look at. I'm just going to do the Columbus, Ohio area. And um, then we can do a sales class. So um, let's look at small businesses here. Um, we'll just look at the if you look at industry wide, it's going to be every single uh, industry entity. Uh, the small business, you know, would, would kind of give you kind of your your uh, you're comparing, you know, your company potentially to similar sized uh, companies. OK, so you're not comparing it to a, a huge, um, huge outfit. Right. So we're just going to do the small less than, you know, uh, five million dollars. And we can go over here and click on access now. And we will click access now here. And this takes a second to load. You can see up here on the right hand side. Um, None of this is clickable over here on the left until everything up here is loaded. OK, so um, this is one of those times when you're doing a presentation like this and you're like, oh, there it goes. Data loaded. OK, it's cool. I didn't have to make up any funny jokes or anything. So. Um, so anyway, what you have over here, if you have. Um, um, the uh, so here's information about the, you know how many industries there were in the industry or how many industries or firms they analyzed over the past five years or so. Right. Uh, if we look at the financials here on the left hand side, um, we get, um, you know, we get industry financials. You can look at this by a balance sheet, et cetera. So here's like how much they pay for, you know, salaries and wages. This is the percentage. You know, if we want to look at dollars, you know, salary and wages, averages across the board, how much they pay for rent, um, things like that. How much they pay, for, you know, what other kind of expenses, you know, what are, what are their, you know, after tax net profit, you know, things like that uh, per year, all that kind of stuff. OK, so, you know, interesting way to kind of look at um, uh, what's going on there. So and what's nice about BizMiner is there's explanations over here. If you just kind of you know read thoroughly through here as you're looking at the data, there'll be um, there'll be explanations, you know, on the right hand side or throughout, you know, little, or little question marks you can click on that will give you additional data uh, for for the um, uh, what what you're looking at there. OK, so if you're not a finance person yet, you know, this will give you um, uh, information about that kind of stuff. So um, so anyway, other things like, you know, uh, profitability ratios, you know, for for the area, um, you know, you know, small businesses, ice cream parlors in the Columbus, Ohio area. So we're looking at this again on the on the local level. OK, uh, if we go back to uh, our BizMiner homepage here, um, just to kind of give you an example of what else you can look at in here are these industry market profiles. And once again, uh, we can choose, uh, I'll just choose ice cream again as my example. And we'll search here and look for ice cream parlors. All right, once again, I can't click anything now until I make a choice of what kind of um, market area I want to look at. Now you'll notice here there's a radius option and what a radius option allows you to do. Let's say I, I have chosen my my street address right next to my yoga shop um, for my ice cream parlor. And so if I had an, an actual address and you can do this, if you have an actual street address, you can put that in the radius and it'll pull up, you know, just companies and, or just uh, an, an analysis of that radius, you know, five mile, 10 mile, whatever radius of the area. OK, uh, I'm going to do a radius search in our in our next uh, uh, database uh, just to kind of show you how what a radius search might look like. OK, so I'm going to select our market area here and um, just to kind of show you here, we can get a little bit more granular uh, in this section. So if I just click on Ohio here. Um, whoops. Let's try that again. Ohio. I clicked on Ohio and I didn't wait long enough. You can see what's happening. It's actually loading here on the back side. And what it'll do is it'll load um, zip codes. It'll load uh, counties. It'll load cities. Um, so we can find, you know, we can go in and click on individual areas 
uh, once it loads for us. And hopefully it'll be a little, little quicker than this. Well, maybe. All right, there we go. There we go. That's good. That's what it's supposed to do. Ha! <laughs> Finally. Um, so here we see the metros areas we can look at, counties as well as zip codes. You'll notice with the zip codes you can select multiple zip codes. So if you're looking at, you know, multiple zip codes across uh, a county or a city area, you can just kind of click, 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 and you're good to go. Um, apparently, I clicked too soon and now it freaked it out. Um, the other thing you could do is, uh, in addition to clicking on those, is you can go up here and and um, search for a market. And let me search for uh, actually search for Franklin. And I actually searched for Franklin County before. That did not work. Uh, but you see under counties here, if we look for Franklin, and eventually scroll down to Franklin, Ohio. There. Okay. All right, so now we find 67 operations that are in BizMiner that are analyzed uh, for ice cream parlors in Franklin, Ohio uh, County metro area. So we can click access now here and once more access now uh, one more time. <clears throat> now these reports take a little bit longer to load than the industry financial profile reports. Uh, up again here in the right hand side, you can see that they're loading. Um, uh, they just changed the interface of this pretty recently, and and uh, when I first tried it, I wasn't very patient. I kept clicking, clicking, clicking over here on the left hand side, and nothing would happen because I wasn't waiting long enough for the thing to load. So we'll we'll give it a minute here um, uh, for this to load here. All right. Um, while we're waiting on that, uh, the industry uh, financial profile, uh, the first thing I showed with you with BizMiner, that is demonstrated right here in this video here about BizMiner. OK, so it, it shows you how to find, you know, um, you know, profit margin and other industry financial uh, stuff for a local market uh, in the ice cream industry. OK. All right. So uh, our data is finally loaded over here. We can download the data if we want to. Uh, I'm just going to kind of go through some of the areas in the left hand side to highlight what you might find in a full downloaded report. Uh, the first thing you'll see, there's a competitors tab here. And um, so here we see if you're from Columbus or have been to Columbus, you probably recognize some of these uh, companies here. And uh, so what, what they'll do here is, um, you know, they're showing you some of the key competitors in the area and they're also giving you information about them. Um, they're giving you a sales bracket uh, area. OK, so uh, so here we have a sales bracket right here. Um, they're not giving you actual sales data because a lot of these are going to be privately held companies. OK, so they're, they're giving you a sales kind of band as far as what you know, what the approximate sales bracket is for these companies. OK, if you wanted better, more granular data for these companies. You, once again, you can go back over to um, uh, our local market info section and then search for the individual companies here in Mergent Intellect. I'm not going to do that today because we did that during our last session together, but you can search for the individual companies there and get uh, more specific, albeit still estimated sales of those companies. OK, so um, uh, and and then we have uh, we've got some tips here as well that kind of suggest how you can how you can filter by industry by location so you can do a similar search for ice cream shops in the Columbus metro area and get a list that way with some sales estimates okay and this video here shows you how to do that albeit it's it's an example using the coffee industry but I give you the the SIC code that you'll want to use to replicate this search to 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 align it with the ice cream industry okay. All right, so uh, so here we have you know industry locations and that kind of stuff. Um, so you can see they they look at a, a number of different uh, companies. Uh, we look at you know, we're going left hand side. Look at the market. Um, so here we see uh, how much uh, market volume is done by small business versus startup companies. Uh, that's pretty interesting and and would be interesting to look at from your perspective as you're looking to start a new a new company in this in this area. Um, you can see there's there's also a share area, so you can see like what percentage of the industry market share comes from from startup companies, right? Um, here we have annual sales. Um, again, so this gives you 
you know, a average sales per site. OK, so if you're a startup company, you know, in 2021, you know, according to the companies they analyzed, you know, their their average sales were in the neighborhood of four hundred thirty one thousand uh, dollars for a startup company. OK, so. Um, and again, you have all this explanation of what the, all this kind of stuff means and things like that. Uh, cessation, I'm just going to kind of skip around a little bit. Cessation is how many companies actually went out of business. So these are kind of failure rates, right? So this kind of gives you an idea as far as how volatile an industry uh, might be um, as you're looking at uh, opening uh, in this particular area. OK, so um, so it kind of gives you an idea as far as you know what um, how viable a potential company might be or how viable companies have been in the past. OK, um, the demographic section here, this is not demographics of ice cream consumers. Uh, that's where you, we do that in Simmons or in Mintel or whatever, but this kind of gives you a, just a general demographics of the local population, which is still pretty useful because if you learned, you know, about particular demographics in Mintel, looking at ice cream consumers, you can still use this data. Okay. All right. So that is, that is, uh, BizMiner, uh, lots of cool things you can do with it. Um, and I just showed you, you know, two, two samples and using the same industry, but you can you can kind of play around and find similar things for like restaurants or you can even find yoga studios, you know, or or uh, probably, you know, uh, fan apparel shops, you know, things like that if you were if you were interested in doing that kind of stuff. OK. <clears throat> All right. Uh, the next one to look at is your local market info is if we scroll down a little bit here. Uh, the last one on the list here is simply analytics. <clears throat> All right, so simply analytics. Um, you don't have to do this, but I would encourage you to create an account with them. Just use your Ohio email address and whatever password uh, you want to use. Uh, the reason um, I, I encourage you to to do that is if you create an account with them, what it'll do it is actually save uh, what you were working on last time. OK, uh, if you recall at the beginning of the session, I showed you a map. Um, I closed out of the browser tab and you'll see um, I, I actually uh, still have uh, this map. OK, so it's a cool feature that will remember what you're working on. Um, and I, I appreciate that we, we have that that option to, to create an account with them because despite the name simply analytics sometimes is not quite so simply to use. Um, it can be a little bit of a, a, of a challenge. And again, this is one of those databases that um, requires you to be a little creative with using it and so uh, you may have to spend some time in here uh, with using this okay um, typically uh, our university has uh, 10 simultaneous users uh, for the whole university okay uh, and that kind of that costs a pretty penny uh, but our vendor uh, has has expanded access so we have 50 simultaneous users for pretty much the duration of project two so i've got a, the, the vendors are that do that for simply analytics are, are great to work with and uh, highly appreciate them uh, giving us some additional uh, uh, seats so that we're not we're not kicked out when we try to log into this thing. OK. Now, the way this thing works, um, you'll start off with like a new project. OK, so I'm going to start off and let's say I really want to open my ice cream shop either in Memphis, Tennessee or in um, Chattanooga, Tennessee. OK. All right, so I'm gonna, I want to open my ice cream shop in one of these two places. Um, and I'm also just going to look at the state of Tennessee as well. Um, just so I can compare those cities to the, the state averages, right? And then I can also even look at, um, this is the zip code I, gr I grew up in in Chattanooga, Tennessee. I'm gonna just going to, I can look at this by zip code level. I can also look at this uh, by, um, by county level. So there's Hamilton County, Tennessee. That's the county that Ch that Chattanooga goes in. OK, so so I've selected some some date, some 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 locations. All right, you can do one location if you're just looking for a particular city or zip code or you can do as many as you want. OK, so I'm going to do that and click next. And then it starts you out with these uh, seed variables. OK, so what they're doing here is basically they don't want to start you out empty handed. And so um, I'm going to do um, just total population and um, I guess because I'm, I want to do kind of a um, 
a boutique ice cream shop. I want to do percentage of people who household income $100,000 or more, and we'll just we'll keep median household income there as well. OK, so we can create our project here. And the first thing it's going to do is load the map. Um, I actually prefer to uh, um, because it just loads our first city that we chose, which was Memphis, Tennessee. Um, I'm actually going to do a comparison table first. OK, so here we are looking at compare comparing uh, Chattanooga to Memphis to Hamilton County, and all these are, are ordered so we can say let's move. You know, uh, we can move these around here. Let's move. Uh, so now we're going from small to bigger to biggest, and then we're looking at Memphis over here as well. OK, so you can kind of move all this stuff around if you want. Now, um, I've already done locations and then it throws me in this data area, right? So I can go up here, I can search. I can search for say, let's search for ice cream and see what we get here. Um, so here we have consumer expenditures. That's pretty cool. Ice cream related products, household average. Let's do that, all right? And then you'll notice here, here is some data that looks strikingly similar to what we just saw over uh, when we're looking at you know, Ben and Jerry's ice cream in the Simmons database with the yoga people and the NFL people, that's because it's the same data. All right, it's it's just we're we're getting the Simmons data, but we're going to be able to look at that data on a local level. Okay, so not right now we're looking at people who eat a particular brand of frozen novelty treats. Uh, if we scroll down some more, um, here's people who eat frozen novelty treats brands. This is this is a really long list. You can filter this. So if I want to filter by people who who eat Ben and Jerry's. I would just type in Ben there. And so here we see people who also eat uh, Ben and Jerry's or people who eat Ben and Jerry's ice cream the most. OK, so I'm just going to click on percent and number. And while I'm in here, I want to show you a little trade secret. If you click on this open data folder or any links in here, this will actually go and open the hierarchical list that you've seen me use uh, in um, in Simmons. Okay, so here it, it opens the ice cream and sherbet folder, and right now we're in the brands. Okay, so we could also go in here and, and look at uh, again if we're doing the same sort of stuff. We, if we look at um, let's see, let's go to our to close the food here. For example, if we look at our entertainment leisure, for example, I'm missing it for right now there we go entertainment leisure and we here we have our our uh sports and fitness uh participated every chance i get and then if we scroll down again all the way at the bottom we should find um actually let me just filter here that's a long list here's our yoga right so we've already seen this in our previous database now we can get that on the on the local level if we want to okay so once we're we're looking at this kind of data, we see, um, you know, here we see uh, I've added these data sets, and we're looking at you know these data variables on the left hand side, comparing them to our local market. All right, okay. So now the difference here in in this in this the way this is presented is that um, you know we're looking at what percentage of people in Chattanooga, Tennessee, uh, eat Ben and Jerry's ice cream the most. Okay, so here we see it's 7.14% uh, in this zip code 37421 um, versus evidently 9.45% uh, in Memphis. So maybe Memphis might be a better you know opportunity for me. Um, and neither of which are higher than the national average. OK, so I like to keep this USA national average over here so we can kind of see like, you know, is our is our market kind of really a, a hot area for this consumer item, right? So. Um, so here we see uh, a lot of people in uh, the 37421 area do yoga every chance they get. You know, they're they're pretty close to the national average of 3.84 percent right so you can you can do all this kind of stuff to, to align here all right now what it won't tell you is we, we're not able to say all right how many of these people in chattanooga tennessee who do yoga also eat ben and jerry's ice cream or are also nfl fans okay we can't get that cross tabulation data like we could in simmons okay we can only just get the one variable for the one location all right so you can kind of do this. You can do this to your heart's content. You can um, you can then go over here and map the stuff, right? So if we're looking at um, mapping a map, now right now we're looking at Memphis. If we're looking at the state of Tennessee, for example, and 
Uh, right now we're looking at total population. If we wanted to change this, let's look at the percentage of people who uh, eat Ben and Jerry's ice cream the most. All right. Now, this is probably not a big surprise, but you can see that uh, the the surrounding areas, the 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 suburbs of um, Nashville, Tennessee, you know, where they're a little bit more more affluent, uh, tend to uh, uh, dine on um, Ben and Jerry's more than other areas. Right. So uh, Memphis, you know, a, a close second here, but the area around Nashville is probably if I was going to open a boutique uh, place, um, that might be where I want to go. OK, so uh, and then we're looking at this by counties here as well. OK, now you can also go in and let's say I did want to open a shop and uh, around like my neck of the woods where I grew up. OK, so I'm going to do a location. And I'm going to do a custom location and I'm going to do a radius location. OK, so uh, my location, I'm going to search for uh, my old street address. Um, all right, so you'll you'll I can't even spell my old town anymore. All right, so we'll do that. Nothing comes up. We'll just do an address search here and you'll see it doesn't exactly find the address. What it finds is. It finds the county that my street is in or the city or the zip code or the census track or the block group. The block group is essentially my old neighborhood. OK, so that's as granular as they go. So I want to click on the block group here. And let's say um, so let's say I'm going to I'm going to buy that old house. And put an ice cream shop inside the house. Probably a dumb idea, but you'll get the idea that this is just how we're building this location here. OK, so now I'm going to look for um, maybe people are going to drive within uh, five miles to my location and we'll just call this five miles from uh, Chad's uh, ice cream. All right, and we'll save that. And so now here's our here is our uh, five mile radius uh, surrounding uh, the area. OK, and you can kind of see I'm probably choosing a pretty poor location here because uh, this is our percentage of people who like who Ben and Jerry's the most and we're looking at by census tracts. Let's look at it by block groups here to see if that changes anything. A um, little bit smaller, more granular level to see if there's so. So maybe not too bad. You know, I've got uh, this is where my block group is at. And so I can see that they're you know, the, the nearby people are are maybe inclined to uh, to to dine on my ice cream here. Um, so what's cool about this thing is we've got this map here. We can actually export this map as a as a file, but before we do that, we can go in and customize this thing over here. So let's go over here and um, let's edit this map. And the first thing I want to show you here is you can kind of mess with the way these category ranges are broken down. So I'm just going to click on like quantiles local here. Oh, that's a, that's prettier. I like that. That map is is nice. Okay, so it's got a little bit more color in it. All it did was it changed the category ranges here, made it a little bit more interesting to look at. All right. Um, you can kind of mess around with here and just choose whatever to see um, see what how the how the map is reflected in the color scheme based on the how the data aligns. OK, and then we can change the color scheme here and um, I don't know. I think probably this uh, this is probably a nice neutral area to start with for for ice cream and then maybe you know uh, if I want to I can go over here and change the color. So there's like um, maybe I don't want this this blue. Maybe I'm I'm kind of wanted a a more of a brown, you know, uh, kind of chocolate peanut butter flavor kind of deal, you know, so you can go in and kind of change the colors here. You can also go in and actually enter in your own uh, hex code if you want to as well. So if you're trying to align it specifically uh, to a color, you can go in and kind of enter in, you know, a particular uh, color code, uh, that kind of stuff. So a good way to kind of, you know, customize your map. Uh, I would what I would do here is if you're building a map like this, align it to the same colors or whatever your, your logo is for your brand for your new company right so it's a cool way you can kind of do that okay so once you're satisfied with that you can actually go up here and export this map and it this is kind of allows you to kind of go in and build this thing so i'm going to move this over here a little bit and you can actually um, um, you know continue to the layout and um, i can move this guy down here in the corner so it's not in the way I can go up here and add a text label and call it uh, uh, Chad's. Yeah, 
you know, ice cream customers, right? And drag this up here, and I can, of course, I can, you know, change the color of this and all that kind of good stuff as well. So, um, and then once you do that, you can export it to your PowerPoint slide and, um, or as a P PDF or JPEG or whatever, uh, and you're good to go. Okay. So, so pretty cool stuff that you can do there. <clears throat> also, while I'm in here, there's this quick report option. Uh, this is an area where if you're just looking for basic demographics of our locations, uh, you can see that all of our areas are right here. Um, you'll notice one's missing. My my radius location is missing. If you find if if you're looking at any sort of data set in here, and you find something is missing, you can go up and view your actions and edit your view, and you'll see I can now select five miles from Chad. So if I don't want USA anymore, I don't want Tennessee. I just want uh, I don't want Helmand County. I just want Chattanooga uh, and five miles from Chad. I can do that. Click done, and I can. Once again, drag these around so we're going from small to bigger to biggest and look in the data that way. All right. And while you're in here, if you wanted to, you can actually click on these variables. And when you do that, they'll go over here and appear in your in your area. OK, again, if they don't show up, you can go to view actions, edit view. And here's our our age we just chose uh, from our previous one. All right. Click that. Click done. And uh, we just added that variable there. OK. So lots of ways you can use this thing. Um, and again, this this data set here, you can export this as an Excel file as well. So you can you know save it for later, manipulate it later, uh, that sort of thing. All right. So that is that is simply analytics. Again, not quite so simply to use. I do want to show you I don't have a specific video for the ice cream industry, uh, but if you're looking at simply analytics and you click on my uh, tips and tricks guide here, um, this this page here will show you things like you know how to um, uh, how to build geographic comparisons, right? So this this shows you how to build the tables that I just kind of just showed you how to do, right? Or how to how to map your data, right? So uh, so how to create a custom map and that sort of thing. So you can use this to kind of follow along with with how to how to um, how to how to do that for the ice cream industry, okay? All right, uh, once again, uh, anywhere in on my site, you can click on get help from Chad and that will show you uh, my various uh, help options. Uh, typically email teams or schedule appointments, probably your best option. Uh, if you do email or teams and I don't have a ready answer or if, if I um, uh, if I'm likely to be like, hey, you know, it's probably easier to kind of talk through this. Let's make an appointment. I'll, I'll probably encourage you to do that. I do want to tell you again that, you know, uh, my appointments book 24 hours in advance, right? So, um, so if you were you were booking uh, right now, the soonest you'll be able to book will be like 9 a.m. tomorrow. Okay, so just think about that as you as you plan how you're how you're doing your research. Okay, so uh, definitely want to don't want to help you out, but I want to make sure y'all are aware of of uh, uh, of how how planning works and that that sort of thing. So, okay, I will pause there and uh, just pause for any sort of questions or anything like that, um, or I can bid you adios. Um.